report to the cloud. And actually, minimize, not minimize, don't need to do that. Get myself organized here. So tech assignment, create a GeoGebra account if you don't already have one, work through the attached document, post in the discussion board, uh, what are some ways that you might make use of this type of activity in your own class and then put space in the daily discussions? Uh, honestly, I'm not 100% sure. I don't think I, I created the discussion post yet or prompt yet. So that'll be up before the end of the evening. Uh, but I'll, I'll double check that. I'm pretty sure I didn't. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm looking at it. I'm like, yeah, that feels like something I forgot to do. So, uh, so yeah, just sit tight on the discussion part. But, um, but yeah. Uh, the assignment. So you create an account. I, I created what I hope are functional links. Yeah, well, that worked. Um, although I wanted it to go to the next page. All right, well, let me just do it this way. So you created an account, if you haven't already done so, the way you, well, I'm already logged in, so let me log out. To create an account, you hit sign in, it gives you the option to create an account. And what I recommend is using one of these uh, connectors. So it's up to you, but, um, but I find that the fewer accounts that I actually have to make, the, the, the easier my life seems to be. But uh, but also there is the other part of it where it's like okay well you better trust the uh, the the connection you know so if you're concerned that maybe because you're connecting it to GeoGebra that somehow your Microsoft account or your uh, Facebook account is going to get hacked then I would say uh, just create a unique GeoGebra login and just go that go that route all right so let me uh, log in. Oh, what do they hit sign up? Oh, foolish. Sign in. Yeah, no, sign in with Google. That's how it should be. Yeah, whatever. I'll just use this account. It doesn't matter. So that's step one. Create, uh, select the GeoGebra 3D graph and calculator. All right. So you want to make sure you're in 3D. You're going to find out very quickly if you're not. Uh, you're going to plot points and extrude to prism. But you want to plot those points in uh, a counterclockwise fashion. So I'll walk you through what that looks like in a second. All right. Uh, you'll find the area of the base region. You'll find the volume of the prism itself. And it should all look like something along these lines. And then do the same thing instead of with three points, you do, do it with five points. All right. And then the, the trickier part is number 10, where it's create two new three-dimensional figures that have the same approximately of oh, typo approximately the same volume as one another uh, that that got a little screwy these figures must have different base polygons right so i'll show you what i mean by that in a second i gave you a quick example of what i'm looking for i created a uh, quadrilateral as a base and a um, triangle as a base so that's kind of along the lines but I'll, I'll walk you through that in a second all right so it should be a pretty straightforward one to complete. So you go, once you've logged in, you go to 3D calculator. I don't like this uh, this plane. I think it looks ugly. So I, I tend to get rid of that. So in order to get rid of that, what I do is I click the little gear here and where it says show plane, I just uncheck that. It looks a little nicer in my opinion. So you click on the geometry tool, the circle uh, with the overlaying triangle. And you'll see that you have options for points and, and more. Right? I click the more immediately, so I don't lose sight of it. You got all these different options. Click point. You see, if you're hovering over in space here, it doesn't do anything. But then when you get low enough, you see a little a little X, X marks the spot appears. So plot a point anywhere you want. And then if you kind of look at this motion as counterclockwise, just Follow that movement from A and plot a second point, and then follow that movement from B and, and plot a third point. All right. 
doesn't matter where you plot them as long as you have that kind of uh, orientation. You don't want to start at A and go the other way, right? You're starting at A and working your way around in a counterclockwise fashion, right? So then connect those points using the polygon tool. Now, just so you know, once you click on a tool, you're on that tool. So if I start plotting, if I start clicking in the screen here, it's going to plot more points. So I don't want to do that. So whenever I'm in doubt, what I'll do is I'll hit the move button so that I can kind of click freely, right? But I'm going directly to polygon. So what you do is you start at A, go to B, go to C, and then back to A. And you click, it's locked in. And you'll see that the polygon function is still enabled. So I'll go back up and I'll click on move so that I can, again, click freely. So what I need now is the area, the area of the base. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna find the one that says area. There's area. Click the shaded region in your polygon and it'll tell you what the area is. All right, I wanna get out of that function because if I click it again, because what I, I wanna move this out of the way, I wanna make it look nice. But if I click it, if I click it, it's gonna bring it up that, that area. It keeps right in the same area. That's, that's aggravating. So I don't want that. So what I do is when I click the area, again, I go back up as annoying as, annoying as it is, I go back up to move. And then I can drag this guy, assuming it'll let me drag it. You know, you're kind of limited, but at least out of the out of the field of view. You can also kind of change your orientation, make it look a little nicer. You know, because it, it makes it seem like when you plot the points, it makes it seem like it's three uh, two dimensional, but it really is a three dimensional rendering, All right? So, and this area label is kind of floating out in space. So now, what I want to do is extrude to prism, right? You have the under solids, you have all these different options. One of them is prism, but I want to extrude to prism. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to click in the polygon, right? In that shaded area, it's going to ask me for an altitude, right? Just refreshing my memory, I believe I said five, right? So when it says to extrude, you want an altitude of five units, right? So I'm just going to type in a five here and it extrudes through a prism. Now, if you kind of scroll in or out, you can get a better better look. We know what the base area is and we know what the height is. So I can tell you right now that I'm expecting the volume to be five times whatever this base area is. So let's verify that. I'm scrolling down, volume, 58.84, I, I don't know. Could be, I knew it would be in the 50s. 11.77 times five, 58.85 is what my calculator says. And that's most likely because there was some rounding going on. All right, now, just so you know, if I click on move, I can drag these points wherever I want. It's still a base, tri base uh, region of a triangle. But you see here, if I get to a point where the orientation between A, B, and C is clockwise instead of counterclockwise, the extrusion goes downward instead of upward, All right? Not a big deal, but it would be a, kind of against what the, uh, what the requirements of the assignment are, right? So you want it to be in a counterclockwise fashion, right? So you can see here that just by manipulating the location of the points, the original points that you plotted, you can, you can change the look of the figure, but you can also, uh, you can see that the relationship between area and volume is changing accordingly, all right? The benefit of hanging on to something like this, so you did the work, the benefit of hanging on to it is that now you have, you have a product that, let's say you want to make a worksheet, and that worksheet is going to involve solids, you know, like prisms. Now I can, I can make a variety of different triangular prisms just by manipulating the points that I have. So you save your work, call it whatever you want. I'm calling a can prism, kind of redundant, but whatever. So that's the triangular component of it. Clicked on the wrong thing. Now I want to do it with a pentagonal base area, right? So it's up to you. If you can fit it all in the same graph, that's fine. If not, then you might want to open up a new graph. So you give it a shot. 
again, the idea is that you have to organize your points in a um, counterclockwise fashion. So give it a shot, see if you can fit it. Two, three, four, five. Looks like it can get it in there. It's a little side-by-side -side action, right? So polygon, starting on, you know, here we already used A, B, and C. So start with the first letter in the alphabet and work your way around in that counterclockwise fashion. Now, it's not a perfect pentagon, but it doesn't have to be. I want my area, so I'm getting them going down to area. Click on that bad boy. Click back up on move so I can move it out of the way. Then I want to extrude. If I can find it, there it is, extrude to prism. Type in the five. And now we have a base area with height. And again, if I move some points around, you see if I change the orientation so that it's not uh, counterclockwise, strictly counterclockwise, it, it, it extrudes in a downward direction, right? But you can kind of play around with it to make it look a little nicer or, you know, like, again, it's, it's all it has to have is five sides, doesn't matter what it looks like. You make a funky looking diagram. You could even make it look almost triangular if you want, but it's, it's entirely up to you. All right, uh, we need the volume out of this. So scrolling down, looking for my volume, right now, click volume. You know, in terms of getting a good look out of it, you know, whatever you can do to make it visible is, is always appreciated. All right, so now I have two of my figures. I'm just gonna do a quick save. Still calling it can prism, they're both prisms, so we're good to go there. So when I say your results should look similar to this, it should be five points with height and you should have the volume in the area. Now create two new 3D figures that have approximately the same volume as one another. So this is where you're gonna do, do more uh, diagrams. So it's not so much a matter of saying, all right, well, make these work out. You gotta, you gotta do it with two additional diagrams. So if you could if still, if you could fit it all in the same, on the same uh, GeoGebra, that's fine. Uh, if you click home, sometimes it uh, it kind of gives you a sense of what you're working with. Uh, you could also you know, do that and it kind of looks cool, but that's not necessary. If you scroll out, you give yourself a little bit more wiggle room. So if you want to try to do your next set of points, you know, over on the side here, you can try, but you, you run out of room here. So my expectation is that you'll have two files that you'll be submitting. But uh, but if you can make it work with only one file, then by all means, you know, go for it. Uh, but I can demonstrate just using this one what I'm talking about here. What we're looking for is two three-dimensional figures that have approximately the same volume as one another. And you can see in my diagrams how how that played out. But really, all you're doing is really just kind of manipulating your base area so that your volume changes. All right. So let me see if I can kind of make this. A little bit more visible. Okay, so it doesn't matter which one you manipulate. You know, the idea is that you're going to come up with volumes that are roughly the same. So I want this one to be about 46 ish, kind of close, pretty close. You want to get a little closer than that. It's a matter of pride at that point, I would think. You don't have to be exact, but if you're if you're close, I'd say if you're within half a unit, and I'll make that a, the official ruling. If you're within half a unit, then you're good. Although I do realize that I got a little crisscross here, so this is not uh, the appropriate orientation. Oh, cancel uh, the appropriate orientation. So I do have to fix that. Okay, these points. Do a little. Uh, if you put too much in the in a geogebra, sometimes it uh, it could it could freeze up on you and, and kind of glitch on you. So you got to be careful, All right? So what what just happened here is it it definitely froze up on me, and so now I'm like, oh, what what do I do? 
open, open the one I want to open and select edit. All right. So don't save this one because that was a disaster. And this is what I'm working with. All right. And so you got to just be careful because sometimes you can you sort of lose your um, lose your work if you don't um, if you don't save it at the right time. So it looks like I lost my base areas and I lost my volume. So what I would do is I just kind of tuck that back in there. Get my volumes in there. And then hit save again, making sure that that got locked in. All right. So again, the idea is to just play around with the dimensions, the, the coordinates, until you're looking at volumes that are roughly the same. And again, roughly the same. I'm looking for values that are within half a half of a cubic unit of one another. All right. So this this gets the job done. 43.25, 43.63. These are roughly the same. So then I would save it there. And then when I want to share my work, right? So you want to share your work, and, and you you should have two files: one where you did your um, or minimum two files. You have your triangular prism, you have your pentagonal prism, and then you have the two figures that uh, that should have the same, uh, roughly the same volume, right? So just make sure you're following the instructions. But when you go to share your work, select share. It'll ask you in most cases if you want to save it again, but it'll give you a share link. What I recommend is that you test your share link. I keep hitting command I keep, for whatever reason, thinking this is a Mac. Test your link to make sure that it brings up the right stuff and then put that into your submission, all right? So here I'm just looking for your links, all right? So under right submission, Boom, there's one link. You'll have a couple more links and then you submit. All right, so that's what I'm looking for there. What a lot of people do when it comes to GeoGebra, because it can be a little glitchy, is they'll take uh, screenshots of the ideal orientation of their graph. So they'll send me the links. I, I definitely need, need the links of your work because it's too easy to, to, well, I'll just come out and say it, cheat. So, um, so I do need the links, your GeoGebra links. But what a lot of people do will do is supplement that with the um, the, the screen capture screenshots, so that I that they they, they want to make sure that I see what they want me to see. So if you want to do that, that's perfectly fine too. All right. So we get a due date of December eighth. That's also the due date or the date of the next skills assessment. And so with that, I'm going to stop the recording.